Like I told you last night, I think some of the specialist real estate investment trusts are very enticing here. Today, I want to highlight another one that I've always liked. It's called Prologis. It owns warehouses and fulfillment centers all over the world. You've seen them along the sides of the, if you're like, take Interstate 95, all the major highways. Uh, Amazon uses them, UPS uses them, FedEx uses them. They're some of the larger customers. They're a crucial cog in the e commerce logistics machine. When the market cut gets annihilated, well, you know what? Everything goes down. Prologue just tumbled from 99 to below 60, and it bottomed there a couple weeks ago. So why didn't I pound the table then? Because even though the lockdown's great for online shopping, Prologue also has rents, rents warehouse spaces to traditional retailers. Not a great business right now, and so I was a little gun-shy. Plus, historically, this company's been a little cyclical. you got to worry about how they'll hold up in the face of recession. They were one of the first stocks that bottomed in the 2008-2009 recession. Yesterday, Prologue held a business update, though. And it turns out the positives far outweigh the negatives, and I was too I was too reticent. Since most of the country went under lockdown, these guys have seen normal to above average level of leasing activity, with short-term leases surging up 44% last month. The retention rate's actually up. They do have a lot of clients requesting rent deferral and uh, deferral and uh, default rates rising, but not that much. And it's offset by the massive leasing activity from retailers that are trying to build out their e-commerce capacity, and they have to pay higher rates, by the way. And that's why the stock surged 9% yesterday. I think it's still enticing here, frankly. Don't take it from me, though. Let's go. Oh, let's have back. And he hasn't been here in a while. Hamid Mogadam. He's the chairman and CEO of Prologis and the dean of this group. To get a better sense of how his company's handling the lockdown, he called himself an old man on the conference call. I did not like that. <laughs> but you are the best, Mr. Mogadam. Good to see you again. Welcome back to Bad Buddy. Great to see you as well, Jim. All right, I mean, I have to tell you, you set out in your conference call to distinguish between 2008 and 2009 and this period. And I just want you to tell our viewers, because it is remarkable how much better it is for pro lodges. You're playing offense right now, aren't you? Uh, we are. I mean, 2008, pro lodges was a very different company. It had a very different balance sheet. Um, today, it has one of the top two balance sheets in the REIT business. Uh, the market conditions were less favorable going into the downturn. Uh, you know, availability rates were almost double digit uh, in that downturn. Today, we're at 4.6%. So it's the lowest it's ever been in my career. So we're really um, a different company and entering the cycle in a very different set of conditions. You're also now much more of a global company. China, you've been dealing with the impact. You were, this was no stranger for you. You guys were ready. Yeah, we, we saw this um, in early January and, uh, you know, right go, going right into the Chinese New Year. In fact, we had one of our colleagues who was infected, I think, on January 8th or something. So we've been watching this thing for, for a long time. Now, Hamid, one of the things that you're too... Uh, uh, you're too humble to admit, but the fact is that if someone is can't pay or they have to leave, you have below market rents right now. It's actually uh, additive to Prologis' bottom line if someone leaves, correct? It is, uh, Jim. And, and you mentioned the issue of rent deferment and, and things of that nature. And clearly, there are some customers who are having a tough time in this environment, just like everybody is. And uh, we'll work with those customers, but it's got to be legitimate. And I must tell you, there are others who they want to take advantage of an environment like this. And uh, we don't look too favorably to those uh, situations. But that's been a minority. No, you're right. Uh, but I've been speaking to a very prominent retail analyst today who was saying to me, they sent letters to every one of these guys saying, hey, listen, we can't pay. And, you know, and some people were dumb enough to actually you know, take it. But not you guys. You guys know how to do a credit check. We do. I mean, we, we have requirements. We, first of all, we make all the customers aware of the federal assistance programs that have been put in place. We help them along that process. And if we need to, uh, we don't have a problem helping the customers that are really deserving. But, uh, but this is not an opportunistic environment. And nobody should behave that way. One thing that you did point out that I was very proud of, you said, look, there are there's more business. There's going to be more manufacturing in the United States. So you also caveat it by saying in North America. And you know what? Frankly, if it's in Mexico, they're not going to make it give us a hard time because we're great allies. But talk about that reshoring that you think is going to happen. You know, of course, that is going to be um, helpful to our business. But at the end of the day, we don't really care much about where stuff is made. We care about where stuff is confused. 
um, uh, consumed, sorry. Um, and where things are made changes with labor rates and tax policies and tariffs and all kinds of things, which are really unpredictable. But people don't move. Uh, you know, L.A. is a big consumption center. New York is a big consumption center. And those are the markets uh, where we have a big presence. And uh, we, f we found that by staying close to where the end customer is, uh, we can have a very profitable business that's resilient. And it sounds like the end customer, general retailer, food, medical supplies, electronics, and then the, uh, the what goes with it, paper, packaging. Uh, these are all just incredibly strong during the month of March. Jim, 2.5% of the global GDP goes through our buildings. Wow. So uh, just think about that, 2.5%. So pretty much everything goes through our buildings. And it's not a lot of luxury goods. There's some of that, of course, but, but there are necessities. So some aspects of our business, of course, are going to get affected by this. You know, the convention business, the people who supply furniture and all that, the conventions, the hospitality business, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the medical business, the grocery business, the online e-commerce business, those are all taking more space today than they were a year ago. But it sounds like there is a have and have not. You mentioned that the kind of traditional uh, brick and mortar, it, it, it's almost they just can't do it, can they? Well, it's tough to sell goods when when you're closed and, <laughs> and there's social distancing. So. You know, I feel for those guys. I mean, that's a tough business to be in today. And, uh, you know, the good ones will come back and do pretty well. But I think and, and this trend from uh, bricks and mortar to e-commerce has been in place for quite some time. I think this situation uh, is accelerating it because a whole generation of customers, older customers like me, um, who may not have been as as involved with online uh, purchasing, they're now uh, learning new habits, and I, I don't think they're going to unlearn those habits as they discover the convenience um, of using online uh, products and services. No, I sure wish I'd include you. I did that piece the other day about real estate investment trust, and I focused on a couple of companies that I think don't have the growth path you do or in a little more cutthroat, which is data center. You own your space, and you've got the best balance sheet. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished. We do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's Hamid Mogadam. The chairman CEO of Prologis. They've been through tough times and they've come out on the other side. And this is really a great company. And I regret that I did you a disservice by not talking about this one when I did the piece about data centers, because this is in another part of the REITs, but it's a lot stronger in a lot of ways. Man, money's back in. Great. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.